secret, then no one knows. How, how can anyone judge anything that which, is, that which is not known? It's only that which is apparent. But the thing is, I would say the question is more, why would a, why, I, I, as a Muslim, you may think that I'm being biased or something, but I, I would ask question, why would someone leave Islam or not under, accept Islam? I, I, would, I would say it would be of two reasons. One is that they don't understand. There's something which they misunderstood or is not clear to them. So that person, once it's explained to them, if they're sincere, they will accept the explanation. Or second reason is, the person is a person of desires and they don't want the truth. Like, why would you think someone would leave Islam? They might have an opinion of it that's negative. Okay. Or they might not agree with the religion. Maybe. Yeah, but you, can, can we discuss yourself or? Oh, I'm speaking in general. Okay. But for I example... I have nothing against any religion. Yeah. But you were brought up in a Muslim family yeah. and then you decided to leave or... I'd say my iman is pretty weak. But, but you're I not committed. I wouldn't say I dislike anything about Okay. Religion. The thing is, uh, starting from the foundation, do you believe in a God? I do believe there is a God. The Bible says there is. Okay. Okay, that's a very good start. When we say the, there is a God, Obviously, you believe he created us, he made us. Do you think he created us for a reason or for no reason? Maybe a bit of both. Okay. Maybe it could be that um, we were created for no reason, but also with a reason at the same time. Both. So it's like kind of experimental, we're like his favorite creation. Yeah. Because the thing is, the rest of uh, God's creation is predictable, except we aren't. Yeah, we have, we have free choice. Like for example, a cow is going to be a cow. It's going to eat grass, give milk, maybe use for milk, meat, etc. That's a cow. But human beings, certain things are predictable. If we live long enough, we are going to be hungry. We are going to be tired. We, we get sick. We, if we live long, if we live long, we will become old, and eventually we will die. So we're predictable in that way. But in terms of choices, in what we say, how we speak how we behave to be with people, we have choice. But do you think, but the, the thing is, for example, if I ask you about the sun, do you think the sun was created with a purpose? The sun, um, it has to be, yes. To give light, to give heat, etc. To sustain life. Yeah. If, if, if we go, if we go in, a, in a long list like this, water, uh, plants, we will generally come up with the same purpose. Even uh, in our own experience, like, this bag was made, even if the intent was to make money, the intent was to offer something that people want to buy, to carry their stuff, to look nice, uh, your jacket, your shoes, a uh, watch, everything has a purpose. So then would we not say that we, we have a purpose as well? I, I would say it's only reasonable that the Creator created us with a purpose. We, whether, whether, whether we whether we follow it or not is a separate issue. Okay. So if we if we accept the Creator, and we accept that it's reasonable that, that He uh, created us with a purpose, the next question would be, do you think He has informed us of that purpose, or He's left us to find out for ourselves? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, the Quran is said to be the book of guidance. The holy books came down. And the prophets came down as a sense of guidance. Yeah. But I'll say before that, we was left to our own devices. Before the Quran or before any prophets? Before both, by the way. Okay. But see, when you say before the Quran, we would say that Allah mentions the. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٌ عَنِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ اللَّهُ وَشَنِي بِالْتَّعْبُودِ. The Quran mentions Allah says in every nation, every group of people, He sent a messenger telling the people to worship Allah alone and to avoid false worship. So, before the Qur'an, we believe there was prophets who came to the people and there was revelation. So, we, we believe mankind is always... Yes, yes. Thank you. We still got some of them. Alhamdulillah, I'll be there. Inshallah. So, we believe we have a purpose and we've been informed of that purpose, which is, by, as you said, by the sending of books and sending of messengers. So if the, the last messenger came, the Prophet Muhammad and the revelation came, 
then mankind, his, his purpose has been explained. Yeah, so that's the, the bottom line. So, but do you agree with that or you disagree with that or you're not sure or? No, I'd say I agree, but I'm also a bit unsure. Yeah. Okay. So there's, and um, what would make you sure? Do you, do, you, do you wish to be sure? Do you wish to be sure? Yes. Okay. So how would you go about that? I will, um, I will plan to read uh, more different interpretations of the Quran. Okay. More translations of the Quran. Uh, maybe different credible hadiths. Okay. Maybe look up what scholars have to say about it. Different okay. scholars, different groups. Okay. Yeah, that's good. See, the, the thing and is... The debates as well. Okay. The debates are interesting because you get to see both sides. That's true, that's true. But the, I would say one thing as well. If we want to start, if, if a person wants to start understand every single aspect of Islam, it will take a lifetime, and even then, they will probably not reach everything. But the foundations, like the foundations, are very, very simple. There's one God, Allah. Worship Him alone. Accept the Messenger who was sent to you, which was Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the revelation they came with, the Quran. And then last is that one day we have to luck, we have to die, we have to leave this world, and we're going to be judged. And either there's going to be paradise or hellfire. So I would say even a person may not understand all the aspects of Islam, they haven't studied all the aspects of Islam, but this foundation, do you agree with this foundation? Then you're Muslim. Because I, I thought the, your friend said you had left Islam. <laughs> Maybe I just have weak Iman. Okay. Okay, but this is something that happens to everyone. Yeah. Iman goes up and down. Uh, up on uncle, do you, do you mind? I think there, yeah, no problem. You know, um, can, can I explain to you what the, the Muslim scholars from the Quran and from the Sunnah, from the Hadith, how they've explained Iman, faith. I mean, the English translation is faith, but it's, it's, it doesn't really totally equate. Iman in Islam has five parts to it. It is the belief in the heart. So you believe in Allah, you believe in the last day, etc. The actions of the heart, such as loving Allah, fearing Allah, hoping in Allah's mercy. So it's, it's from the heart, belief in the heart. Then second is testification with the tongue. Someone who believes in the heart, but they don't testify with the tongue, then they don't have Iman, they're not a believer. Okay, so you testify with the tongue. I believe in Allah. Only Allah deserves to be worshipped. I believe Muhammad sallallahu is the last messenger. And then actions of the body. This belief it necessitates actions. So when a person prays, when a person fasts, when a person avoids uh, those things which Allah has made haram, this is, this is Iman, this is from Iman. And then lastly, Iman is something which increases. So when the person studies about Islam, when a person worships Allah, when a person obeys Allah, when a person is in a good environment, they read Quran, etc., you will find that Iman increases. And when we are neglectful, we engage in sins, or we disobey Allah, or we're in the environments where Allah is not mentioned, we'll find that Iman will go down. And Iman can rise so high that it becomes like mountains, and Iman can become so low that it disappears. So the thing is, this Iman being weak, we suffer from it because we're busy in this world. But there are ways and means of, of protecting yourself. But, but I, I, from what you're saying, you, you are a Muslim. You agree with the things, but maybe, as all of us, we need to um, improve more and increase more. You don't mind me asking, how is, how is your, your Salat, your prayer? Salat is good, but it's struggling as well. Okay. But you pray on a daily basis? Not daily. Okay. Okay. But from time to time. On Fridays, I make sure I do. MashaAllah, that's good. But you know the, the prayer, sometimes we imagine the prayer as a burden. Like for example, you know you have that which is compulsory, and you have that which is optional. The optional prayers, the Sunnah prayers, are very important. Because they bring you closer to Allah. They, they, they benefit you so much in this life and the hereafter. But if a person is finding it difficult, just do the compulsory. And you know, for example, uh, you know, Fajr Salat is, is two rakat. If a person finds it difficult, 
pray to Rakat Farad, the compulsory prayer, and, and read short, so, short chapters in the Atayna Kalkotha, Kulhu Allahu Had. Just make it short, and then you'll find it's, it's something which is very manageable. Once you're comfortable, once you're able to do that on a regular basis, even if your prayer is short, even if it's quick, but you're praying five times a day, then you can add more sunnah, more optional prayers, make the make the salat longer, read. But it's very important that a Muslim, he has that connection with Allah. We understand who Allah is, we worship Him alone, we have the, the correct belief, and then we establish the prayer. It, it, will, it will help the Iman a lot. No problem, Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. Did you take your Quran? Did you have one? Okay, no problem, no problem. Alhamdulillah. Oh, Alhamdulillah. Have one, Akhi. Sam. Jazakallah khair.